Transition Awareness Breathing. Feeling grounded for both children and parents is essential for healthy living and learning. Join Eartha Powell on this series for tips and tools for creating a harmonious environment for learning. Transition Awareness Breathing will help you and your child find an individualized path to tackle change, promote lifelong learning, and discover new approaches to calmness. Hello, everyone. This is me, Eartha, and welcome to Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. Thank you again for joining me. Today, we are going to talk a little bit more about how stress affects our body. Last time, we talked about Dr. Ney's uh, stress curve and how he pointed out that at the beginning of the apex of that stress curve is the best, the best and healthiest point as far as stress. He also pointed out that at the beginning of the bell curve, when it's low stress, low um, stimulation and uh, low stress that, you know, it is normal to have stress in our lives. Uh, it keeps us alive and breathing and, and our reflexes. But when there's like no uh, stress, zero, and we're not participating in our activities of daily living, that could be cause problems. So on the other hand, as I talked last time, I put a zero to 10 scale, kind of modeling after the pain scale, but uh, relating it to it as a stress scale, if our stress is at a level 10 and so intense that it's, it could cause medical problems, physical problems, psychological problems, if we do not know how to bring ourselves back to calmness. So we talked about a couple of things as far as breathing. And today we're going to talk about uh, another model I'd like to introduce to you. And also I would like to share a practice with you. And so if you haven't had a chance to participate in a mindfulness practice since the last time we were together, this is your chance. So you know, it's okay. You get busy, maybe you thought about doing a practice, and maybe you are aware or you'll do some mindful eating. Uh, so I encourage you and invite you to, when we get to the practice part of our session today, to participate. And, you know, it's all recorded, so you can even re, um, even visit and look at this again, and you can count that as your practice time. And I hope that after our session today, you would even be more convinced to participate in your mindfulness practices. Oh, before I get started, I want to thank Web Talk Radio for allowing me to have a platform to bring Transition Awareness Breathing to you. And thank you, Mary Lou and Sam, for making Transition Awareness Breathing podcast available to my listeners wherever they go. And let me tell you, this has been a, a very big, big step for us as we bring our sessions in video. So I have my notes here. So you're going to see me looking around uh, um, so that I can keep on track. <laughs> okay. So today I would like to share another model and it's called GAS, G-A-S. And this model is also, um, let's see, it was... Uh, written, this article was written about uh, what to know about general adaptive syndrome. And that's what GAS stands for as an acronym. And this was written back in uh, November of 28, 2017 by Dr. Timothy Lake. And I thought, you know, this is just a very uh, simple, to the point, model that I think you will enjoy it. Our bodies weren't meant to maintain high levels of stress. Stress is a an anxiety and a sense of alertness is a response of our body if there's any danger or caution. We were made so that our bodies would go back to a normal um, 
state of calmness and recharge. And what Dr. Lake pointed out in his model is three stages. The three stages of the gas model is one is the alarm reaction. You know, something is going on and the brain is alerted and um, the brain tells the body to start responding. Now with that, there's certain uh, chemicals in our body that's released, you know, hormones are released, such as cortisol and um, adrenaline is stimulated and it, it helps the heart beat faster. It keeps us alert. It's, you know, we're awake. There are also um, prolonged levels of cortisol, prolonged levels of adrenaline can cause the body, because everything is tense, can cause the body some, um, we call adverse or not so good uh, side effects. And that's where the hypertension and the stress and the um, high blood pressure because the body is always pumping out, trying to pump out, you know, the blood and the blood from the vessels and the heart and the heart is, is beating faster. Well, you can imagine that after a while, the body begins to get tired. The body uh, hasn't had a chance to, to recharge. And so the next level is called the resistance level. And the resistance level, this is the part when the body is trying to get back and recover from the the, uh, excretion of the adrenaline and the cortisol. And so it is operated by, um, it's it's like it's a counteracting um, and getting the body back. So you have this, uh, Serotonin that is decreasing uh, the the cortisol. Now, with all that, that sounds all great. It sounds fantastic. Sounds like it's evidence based. Oftentimes, <laughs> it seems like many things in our environment stimulates our adrenaline, uh, different entertainment type of of, uh, situations, media, video games, gets our adrenaline stimulated. And we look forward to that stimulation. Just, I invite you to be aware of When the body is stimulated, when the brain is stimulated, it is an equal opportunity responder. It doesn't know that the stimulation and the adrenaline rush is from, I'm running for my life because there's a dinosaur about to get me. That's our response of being threatened. And hopefully there's no dinosaurs out there, but the body doesn't know. Or if we're on a roller coaster or we're waiting to get on that ride and the adrenaline starts pumping, the body's like, oh, it's, it reacts that it's in a, I gotta be on guard. The perception of how we, we are experiencing that adrenaline may be exciting and fun. The body is trying to protect itself. So I just put that little sticky note out there for you. Not to discourage anything, not to place any judgment, but just to let you know that let's say if you had a stressful time at work and you can't wait to go on vacation and you get a couple of tickets and you're heading off to some exciting theme park wherever it may be, and you want to get on the fastest, highest uh, roller coaster, and you have that adrenaline rush, 
the same adrenaline that's rushing is going to respond in your body the same way as when you're stressed at work and you've had it. <laughs> so what can we do? Do we do, you know, do we just kind of like isolate ourselves? No, that's unrealistic. But being aware that when we're in a resistance phase, that um, when we're taking time for ourselves, we're doing maybe a mindful walk on the beach, spending time uh, maybe participating in something new, learning something new, uh, you know, on vacation, whether you're sailing or going fishing or something, but it's helping the body to recover. And it's a natural response. Also, it's amazing how much our, our world is benefiting from this adrenaline rushing activities. So the next part of recovering is taking care of ourselves and that self-care and re recognizing that not only do I need recovery time and maybe maybe doing some mindful breathing or, or body scan or a mindful walk, but also paying attention to what we're eating, uh, what we're drinking, things that will nourish and recharge the blood cells, the muscles, you know, our body in general. So the last part of the gas stage is the um, exhaustion stage. At this stage, the body has just had it. It's tired. It's it may respond, you know, where we we're foggy in our thoughts. We are cranky. Uh, this is when depression begins to become a problem, anxiety, the feeling that you know I just can't cope. And I'm I'm just guessing that a lot of times, often, unfortunately, we get to that point. And then we recognize I need to do something like take a vacation or mindfulness. So my my question is, when do you think we should practice mindfulness? Do we wait until we're exhausted and tired and depressed? Or maybe if we practice a little bit some at some point of the, the day or at night in the morning, before we start our day or when we get ready to, to go to bed or just some time, maybe exercising. Exercising is another part of self-care. You know, maybe if we did that, then we wouldn't reach the exhaustion state. And to recognize that we are exhausted, our body needs sleep. And so to really take a mindful, peaceful sleep without our devices. So I want to bring up another, um, I'm going to show a video here shortly, but um, I took this class a few years ago and it was about um, the practice of yoga and nursing. And it was by Dr. Uh, Sally Dickerson. And one thing that she pointed out was, you know, when we are stressed and this becomes a chronic stress, we're stressed all the time, or we don't allow ourselves to recover, you know, that resistance where we're pulling back so our body can recover, all that builds up and it's called an allostatic load. And it becomes more difficult to come back to a calm state. Research shows that what helps us to come out of that allostatic load is that mindfulness. <laughs> it's amazing. So what I would like to do now, our session is almost over. I'd like to guide us 
and a practice. I invite you to um, get into a comfortable, comfortable position and allow yourself to be in a place where you have minimal distractions. If you feel comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes. And allow yourself to travel to the favorite spot that maybe a vacation spot, maybe it's a just a favorite place in your your house or but it's a favorite, it's a comforting, a comforting spot. And just be there now, pulling from the experiences into now, the pleasant, the positive experiences. We're not going to let those go to waste. Now, as we are in our favorite spot, in our comfortable position, I invite you, I invite you to take a deep breath in and blow out through your mouth and try to blow as much air out as you can. And when you're breathing in through your nose, it's a gentle breath breathing in and you're paying attention to the temperature of the breath that you're breathing in the temperature of the air the moisture the smells and then blowing out paying attention again to the temperature of the breath that you're blowing out I invite you to allow your five senses to participate in this imagery exercise. What do you hear? Yeah, I know I'm talking, but in the, in your special spot, there's something else. There's more that you're listening to. Maybe it's the waves of water on the beach. Maybe it's the sound of the seagulls, the birds, and the trees. Maybe it's the laughter of children and the smell. What smells, what aromas are you smelling? as you breathe in. Blow away any stress. Any tension. And breathe in. This is your time. This is your now. And then blow out. Allow yourself to visit your feelings and your thoughts. Distracting thoughts may may come and let them go because that's what distracting thoughts do. They come and then they go, just blow it away. Pay attention to the movement of your body as you breathe in. And blow out. The movement of your stomach. The movement of your chest. As you breathe in. And blow out. Notice any tension or pressures in your legs or 
your feet as they're uh, they are touching the floor or or maybe you're laying down. And just release the tension. Let it melt like ice cream. And breathe in and blow out. And as we bring our practice to a close, I invite you to allow the thought of gratitude Allow the thought of gratitude to take a spot in your thought, in your mind, that you're here and you're participating in your self-care right now. And I am thankful that you're here. End of exercise. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and invite you to kind of reflect. How was that experience for you? Okay. Sometimes you have to take a breath after your, your breath. And I see that our time is just about over. And I'm so happy that you were able to join me. In, in summary, I um, want you to, to take away that no matter what anxiety or pressure or stress that's occurring in your life, that you have tools right with you. They're inside of you. And it's as simple as the breath. Or it's as simple as just being aware of the beauty of where you're at. Just for a moment. And allow yourself just to melt in the moment of now. Thank you for joining me. And I want to just put in a little plug that my new book is um, coming out. It's been approved. It's being published. And it's called The Power of the Bar, Rising from the Pit of Hell. Stress, anxiety, excitement can feel like we are in a pit of unknown venture, of no return. And so this book is a result of my journey and in it, um, as I practice mindfulness, it stimulates so much creativity with me that I tend to write, you know, some people journal, some people paint. Um, and so I wrote this book, it's, it's, it has poems, it has stories, it has songs. And then towards the end, I share my personal journey as to um, why I got into this mindfulness. But I'm not going to share that with you now. Get the book. So look for it. That, that, that'll be coming out uh, July the 7th. Um, you're probably seeing this as the book is being released. And so it's on Amazon.com. And I would really appreciate it if you uh, pick up your copy. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to talking to you again next time. Bye. Be sure and pick up a copy of Eartha's new book, Tab Mindfulness, Awareness and Coloring Activities in a Pandemic World. It's not just an ordinary coloring book. It features 23 illustrations to stimulate thought, relaxation, and creativity for anyone between the ages of 4 and 94. Increase your positive self-talk energy. Unlock new creative paths. Transform your time once or twice a week to create beautiful art while strengthening confidence, building positive self-talk, and sensitize self-awareness. Tab Mindfulness. Awareness and coloring activities in a pandemic world. It's available now at Amazon.com.